These worlds, and I think a lot of it's the simple fact that they want to escape from the one they're in. I'm going to tell you something about the world you're in. It's a hell hole. Put it down. As you get older, it doesn't get better. You live in a hell hole. The world that you live in is cursed of God. Sure as you live, when a man is trying to overthrow the curse... He's in rebellion against God. Cursed is the ground for thy sake. That's what he said to Adam. My friend, this world is cursed. There's only one that can lift the curse. Just one. Do you want to hear something good this morning? I'd like to hear something good, wouldn't you? I'm going to read something for you. And if you know me, you know I'm not reading this to pump myself up. I want no glory. But I have to do it this way for you to understand what's going on. This is good news. Last night I got on the internet and got my prayer page down. I, I downloaded the prayer page and then I uploaded it and print, put it on for, where folks can read it and then pray. I pray over what these folks put on that prayer page. You hear some of the most heartbreaking stories you ever heard in your life. If you just read that prayer page, you'll hear everything under the sun. Well, last night... This young man right here posted something on my prayer page. And he said, Preacher, he said, I put one of your messages on YouTube and I hope you're, it's okay with you. He said, I hope you don't get, I hope it's all right. I put one of your messages on YouTube. And I said, Oh, that's fine. We don't charge. <laughs> but I got on YouTube to see what went on there. And he did, a, he did a fine job of editing. He did a wonderful job of editing. But at the end of it, he put this. I want to read it to you. This is what he put at the end of it. You want to hear something good? I profess the name of the Lord Jesus Christ, was raised in church, baptized as a small child. My life up until the age of 23 was lived like hell itself. I was completely out of control. Couldn't do anything about it. Even if I wanted to, I simply couldn't change. That rings true. Nor did I want to give up my alcohol and drugs and sex. I was so scared deep down inside because I knew I was deceiving myself and was not truly saved. But then one sweet day, while under terrible conviction of the Holy Spirit, I cried out to Jesus in my tears, face buried in the floor, have mercy on me, Jesus. I need you. <laughs> then to my shock, I heard the loving voice of my Savior. You are forgiven. <laughs> my tears dried in an instant. I stood up with my burden completely lifted off my chest. I could not believe what had happened. I felt 100% washed and clean. Like a totally new man, my spirit was born that day. I was born again. My life has not been perfect since that day, but every single day God has drawn me closer and closer to himself. The drugs and alcohol are gone, and I'm happily married. Jesus is the breath I breathe every morning when I wake up. You don't make up this stuff. I love his holy word. Sharing with others what has happened to me and the blessed fellowship with others, brothers, with other brothers and sisters in Christ. I want to sincerely thank Preacher Lawson of Temple Baptist Church in Knoxville, Tennessee. Brother, your preaching demanded a response from me. I listened to a message you preached on hell when I was 14. You were forgotten about until I was 22 years old. Then God guided me to your ministry. For a year straight, I listened to your messages. And the good Lord used them to bring me home to Him. God bless you until we meet in glory. Sincerely, I like this at the bottom. Just another used to be dirty, low down, stinking dog. Travis Patrick, age 25, Ohio. 
Ohio. What's the difference between the two? What's the difference between the killer and the one born again? Jesus. They're both human beings. They're both under the curse of sin. Neither one has any hope. This one, this one here fell trapped to Satan, followed in a lie, his own deception, and now a perish. This one? He said, a year, he said, I sat there and watched you. A year. A year. Now that's what I preach and what I believe. If you are not drawn by the Holy Ghost and convicted of your sin, you will not be saved. That's, not why, that's why I'm not a great soul winner. I don't believe in sticking numbers on that wall back there just to impress some of the church. Oh, I believe in winning souls. I'm all for it. When I say I'm not a great soul winner, I'm not what they call soul winner. I believe God's got to do the work. And when He does it, that's what you get. Some of you are in one of two or three different places. Some of you are church members, like He was. Got saved at a such and such an age, and you've been living like hell now for the last 20 years. You live like hell. You fornicate, you drink, you blaspheme. You come in here and put on a face on Sunday, but you are a living terror when you walk out that door. And yet you say to me, you're going to heaven? You say to me, you're saved? Listen, if you're saved, everything I preach up here is a joke. All of this is the biggest joke that ever was. We're all deluded. If you can live like that and go to heaven then this is just a big joke. No, you're not saved. You see, same thing happened to me. Same thing. I buried my head, and I said, God, be merciful to me, a sinner. And I didn't have a clue what was going to happen to me when I raised my head back up. But when I raised my head back up, it was all gone. Just exactly like him. That's how I got saved. When I raised my head back up, I had something lifted off the top of me. I had a lightness come into my soul. I had a song come into my heart. I had peace all over me. I had the world I was in I never was in before. And a love was built in my heart for the Lord Jesus Christ. And it hadn't died since then. It's wonderful. Salvation. If I could just get it across to church members. Well, preacher, I believe in the virgin birth, the death, burial, resurrection. I believe in the blood atonement. I believe, I believe, I, and that's what you believed. Do you have Christ in your heart? Does Jesus live in your soul? Does he? Does he? If he does, he changes you. And I've never met this young man right here from Ohio, but I'm going to meet him one day. Hallelujah to God for that testimony. Lord sends things to you when you're right, when you need them. I've spent 15 hours on dead birds, dead fish, the occult world, and all that other stuff. And that war, it just gets you to where you're thinking, my goodness, Grace, tired of this. And then I'll download it my web page and got my prayers. And I got into that. And I think, I thank you, thank you. Thank you, Lord, thank you. Something to bless a man's soul. And I took that to bed with me last night. The testimony of that young man got saved. Hallelujah. Where do you stand tonight, this morning? Where do you stand? You ever had that happen to you? I didn't ask you if you were baptized as a baby. I didn't ask you if you were confirmed into some church. I didn't ask you if somebody sprinkled water over your head, waved something across you. I didn't ask you what all you believe. I ask you, do you have the Son of God in your heart and in your soul? Or not? You see, somebody, listen. I remember asking an aunt one time. I hadn't been saved long. I hadn't been saved long at all. She's one of my aunts. I looked over at her and I, you know, in my, in my naive naivety, my, my ignorance, my, how stupid was I to even dare to ask her a question if she was saved. But I did. I said, have you ever been saved? You know what my answer to that was? Here's what my aunt said back to me. I was baptized in such and such a church a long time ago. 
Offended. Offended. Somebody asked me if I'm born again. I'll say, let me tell you about it. Let me tell you. Let me tell you. I'm not ashamed of him. That's why I constantly harp on the old sorry low down dog. Because that's what I was. Father in Jesus name. I pray that you'd use what I've said this morning Lord. Thank you for the testimony of that young man up there in Ohio. But our heavenly father God we can't look over what happened out there in Tucson Arizona. That's two different worlds Lord. One world's the world of damnation. The other one's the world of salvation. God, we have them stand before us this morning. We make a choice. Which world do we choose? Do we choose damnation or salvation? Jesus, we present to Thee, in Thy sweet holy name, this service and these people. It's in Your hands. I can't save them, Lord. I'm just the messenger. In Thy sweet name we pray, and for Jesus' sake we ask it. Amen. Let's stand.